We're going to talk about two classes of maps today, general reference maps and thematic maps. It's going to be so exciting. All right, it's not really going to be that exciting, but we'll get through it. You have a handout. All you need to do is pay attention, follow along, and fill in some notes as you go. Our first class of maps are what we call general purpose maps, also known as reference maps or location maps. What do they show? They show the natural and human features of a place without any analysis. We don't analyze anything on these maps. We're not interpreting anything on these maps. Examples of the general reference maps. If you ever look at a street map, a highway map, that is a general reference map. They're going to show us the location of places, and they're going to show us the features of an area. So you'll see bodies of water, roads, railway lines, parks, elevations, different towns and cities. You'll see political boundaries, latitude and longitude. But there is no analysis taking place. There is no interpretation taking place on these maps. A thematic map is a map that focuses on a specific subject or theme, hence the name thematic map. They show a specific spatial distribution or single category of data. On these maps, you are going to see analysis taking place. There is going to be interpretation of data. They might show rivers and mountains and boundaries and roads and places and many of the features that you see on a general purpose map, but they're only there as points of reference and you wouldn't want to depend on them for their accuracy. All right, there are two types of thematic maps. We have qualitative thematic maps and quantitative thematic maps. Qualitative thematic maps show the where, like in this map here of the global distribution of language families. It's not showing us what percentage of the world's people speak an Indo-European language or a Sino-Tibetan language. It's just showing us where these speakers are. A quantitative map, on the other hand, shows the how much of something and not just the where of something. So instead of a qualitative map that may show the distribution of U.S. parks, a quantitative map might show the number of park visitors. Or whereas a qualitative thematic map might simply show the distribution of oil and natural gas production in the U.S., like this map here, a quantitative thematic map might show the number of barrels of oil extracted throughout the US. So quantitative maps are always going to include numerical data. All right, next we're going to look at four types of quantitative maps. We're going to look at choropleth maps, dot distribution maps, isoline maps, and proportional symbol or graduated symbol maps. We'll also look at a fifth type of thematic map called a cartogram, but we're going to see that's technically not a map. For each type of quantitative thematic map, we're going to describe them, and then we're going to talk about their strengths and weaknesses. Let's start with choropleth maps. It's not choropleth, it's choropleth. Choropleth maps, they're going to show us data according to predefined boundaries. So this could be county lines, maybe state boundaries, and they're going to use different shades or colors to indicate differences. The strengths of a choropleth map. They're very, very easy to make. And that's why the vast majority of maps you see on television or in a newspaper or magazine, they're going to be choropleth maps. The weaknesses of a choropleth map. There's a lot of generalization in these maps. For example, in the choropleth map here, showing the percent of the population 65 or older in Florida in the year 1970, we see that multiple counties appear to be identical. If you remember from a couple lessons ago, we call this induction. Next, we have dot distribution maps. On a dot distribution map, each dot has the same numerical value. It could stand for 1, it could represent 10,000. Each dot is used to record data, but also to show spatial patterns and distribution and dispersion. If we look at this population map of Australia, we see a pattern in the way that the people are distributed. Most Australians do live along the coast, especially in the southeastern part of the island. In the interior, we see very few Australians settling, and that's largely because it's desert in that region. The strengths of a dot distribution map. They're very accurate maps, much more accurate than choropleth maps, and you can do a better job of pinpointing exact locations. The weaknesses of a dot distribution map, 
They're really difficult to make. This is not the type of thematic map you're going to draw freehand. You would definitely want to have some mapping software if you're going to create one of these maps. Moving on. Next, we have isoline maps. An isoline map uses line symbols to show a continuous distribution, such as temperature, or elevation, or distance, or precipitation. The word isoline refers to lines that connect points of equal numeric value. Take this map for example. This isoline map uses lines of equal travel time. We call these types of lines isochrones. Iso for equal, chronos for time, isochrones. If you look at San Diego, which is marked by a star, everything within that first isochrone can be reached within five minutes time. If we go a little bit further out, we can see all the ground that can be covered within 10 minutes time. Still further out, everything within that third isochrone can be reached within 15 minutes time. Now take note of the effect of the freeways on travel time for areas within 30 minutes. Now an isoline is simply a generic term for any line on the map that connects points of equal value. So we just saw that lines of equal travel time, we call those isochrones. If we're talking about lines of equal elevation, we call those contours. And a contour map is one of the best known types of an isoline map. Lines of equal air pressure, we call those isobars. And the list goes on, really. Just remember that iso means equal. The last type of quantitative thematic map is the proportional symbol or graduated symbol map. On these maps, the selected symbol size varies in proportion to the quantities the symbol represents. The symbol can be customized using different colors, different patterns, and different symbols. The strengths of these maps, they give you the where and they give you the how much. The weaknesses, they're less exact than the dot distribution map and they can also be difficult to make. We do need to talk about cartograms. A cartogram is a graphic in which some thematic mapping variable, whether it's population size or obesity rates, it's substituted for land area. Strictly speaking, these are not really maps because they're not drawn to scale. Instead, areas on the cartogram are intentionally drawn larger or smaller in proportion to the phenomenon being shown. A cartogram of world population, for example, might show countries as being either larger or smaller in proportion to their populations. So now that we've talked about the different types of thematic maps, let's look at some examples. For each of these maps coming up, I want you to think about, are they a qualitative thematic map or a quantitative thematic map? If they are a quantitative thematic map, are they a choropleth map, a dot distribution map, an isoline map, or a graduated symbol map. All right, here we go.